2018 G Funk in the house. A minus my partner in crime. Mr. X will be back next week. He's just getting back today. He's probably a little jet lag, so uh, he said he'll definitely be joining us next show. So, Mr. X, if you I hope you're watching. I don't know if you have time to watch, but I hope you are. Um, hope everyone's doing well. I got a little my top ten I put out there on my uh, page, my G Funk page there. Um, top ten Intercontinental Champions. Um, for me, it was tough because I've you know, I've been watching since the you know, mid '80s, early early mid '80s to now. Um, there's been so many. I have my top ten in no particular order. Um, I was trying to, I didn't really know how to range it in a particular order. Shout out to my man Jay who's watching. Shout out, brother. How you doing? Um, top ten. Like I said, it was very tough. I, I had to really narrow it down to uh, a few people. Like, like I said, top ten wasn't easy. There's a lot of great. There was a lot of great NFL champions. What's up, Mike? Holler at Mike. Um, top ten. First, I picked Miz off the bat because he's been awesome. Um, he's won like seven. I think he's only like one behind for an all-time count. I, I, I went by how many times you've held it, how many days you held it, um, the rivalries you had while you had the belt, the, the matches you had. Um, a lot of criteria that I went by. Um, but uh, like I said, I, I'm watching since like the you know, early to mid-80s. So there's been a lot, of, a lot of good guys, a lot of guys I haven't had it that long. Um, Pedro Morales has, has a record for holding 619 days. I never saw him hold it, but back then when he was, they only like defended the belt like every six months. So that's because that's why I had it so, so for so long. This is before WrestleMania and all that other shit. And there's a pay per view every month and they're constantly defending the belt. So, excuse me. So um, so we're top Miz right off the bat because he's I think he's the one behind Jericho most times held. Um, Chris Jericho is my second one on the list. Chris Jericho's nine times. Miz, I think, is one behind or two behind. I think he's held it seven or eight times already. He might break the record unless Jericho comes back and wins the college championship again, which, I don't know, might happen. Who knows? Um, the Hockey Talk Man held it for the longest consecutive reign. Um, that was like 453 days. I do believe it was something to that. Um, <laughs> so um, Macho Man was definitely up there. Macho Man is a great match with Ricky Dragon Steamboat, um, uh, Ultimate Warrior, uh, Ravishing Rick Rude. Uh, he, he had some good matches. He had some um, Jake the Snake. Uh, he was a good Intercontinental Champion Macho Man. You know, he was one of my favorites. Shawn Michaels had a great rivalry with Razor Ramon. He was, I was at WrestleMania 10 with the ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship. That match was by far one of the greatest Intercontinental Championship matches I've ever seen. Uh, so, you know, well, what are you doing top 10 list? But it's not in order. I missed that. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't have any time to really. I didn't know how to put it in order because they're also. I like everyone so much, so I didn't know how to do it in a certain order. So I was like, you know, something. I'll just keep it as is. Um, like I said, Shawn Michaels was great, and Razor. I Razor Ramon's next on my list. He was great in Hall Champion. Um, he had a lot of great rivalries as well. Shawn Michaels had you know, with Bret Hart, and um, he had, you know, Razor Ramon. He had a few other ones too. Um, as he got as he went on, he had uh, Shaw, uh, I think it was Owen Hart and a couple other guys. Uh, Jeff Jarrett is up there. Jeff Jarrett held the belt a few, about I think it was four or five times. Uh, he didn't, he didn't hold it for a particular. I know the amount of times he he had the belt. I think it was four or five times that he did not have it for more than like two hundred and some odd days each. You know, combined out of the five times that he had it. So, but still one of the great NFL champions and future WWE Hall of Famer going in this year. Um, Brett the Hitman Hart, by far one. Of, I think he's probably one of the best NFL champions of all time. You know, his feud with um, Mr. Perfect. Shawn Michaels, uh, Diesel, he, you know, he had, he had a lot of great um, runs with the NL Championship, and uh, I, I think my, my favorite was SummerSlam, Mr. Perfect, I forgot what year it was, but um, Mr. Perfect and, and Bret Hart put one of the best wrestling shows on in, like, history, I, I thought it was one of the greatest matches I've ever seen. Um, Mr. Perfect, my other one, uh, he, uh, like I said, he had a great feud with Bret Hart, um, he had a good one with... Uh, Macho Man, not Macho Man, I'm sorry, um, with the Ultimate Warrior, uh, a couple of good feuds, a couple of good matches he put on, the one with Bret Hart, I said, like, it's one of, probably one of the best matches I've ever seen, um, and then uh, my other one is Rob Van Dam, Rob Van Dam held the championship six times, I didn't realize that until I looked it up, and uh, he was really good, he had some great matches, um, you know, in the Attitude Era, and uh, he defended it, he, he, he had, I think, a couple, 
200 and some odd days, 237 days, I do believe it was, 200 and, he was right around Bret Hart, Bret Hart only had the NFL Championship, I think, three times, twice, two or three times, but he was, like, around the same amount of times, you know, the days held combined, uh, championship reigns, um, otherwise, I thought, you know, um, there were so many honorable guys that you can mention, but, like I said, those are top ten that, you know, that, you know Ultimate Warrior, Ravishing Rick Rude, um, they, uh, you know, Stone Cold, but, you know, Stone Cold was known for being WWE champion. Um, I don't think, I, I, I'm trying to go back. If anyone knows, I, I can't remember if, if the Undertaker won the Uncommon Championship. I don't think he ever did. But, um, you know, there's a few other guys out there. Uh, Edge, one of them, Christian, um, Tito Santana. Thanks, Jay. That's the other one I was thinking. Tito Santana um, was a great Uncommon Champion in the 80s. Um, Don Morocco, The Rock, Don Morocco, he was also, uh, he held it for a while. Uh, who else? There's been a, there's been a decent amount along the way. You know, the Miz lately's been the guy who's had it for a while. Roman Reigns, you know, he's been a decent intercontinental champion, but nothing. You know, I'm I'm gonna write home. I think Dean Ambrose was a good intercontinental champion when he had the belt. Um, you know, just name a few. Uh, like I said, those those are my top ten. You know, Miz, Chris Jericho, Hawk Tuck Man, Macho Man, Shawn Michaels, Razor Ramon, Jeff Jarrett, Bret Hart, Mr. Perfect, and Rob Van Dam. Those are my top ten. No particular order, like I said, I didn't really know who to put in what order. It was, it was like because I, I, I'm so favored as a certain guy, so I didn't really know who to like. Oh, should I watch this, you know, this guy? I'm like, I should put this. You know, like, I, I try to go ten through one, and I just couldn't pick a number one. But like I said, to me, I thought Macho Man was a great NFL champion. He's probably one of my favorite NFL champions of all time. Him, him, and Mr. Perfect. Uh, their matches, I, I think Mr. Perfect and Bret Hart. Like I said their match for SummerSlam the one year was phenomenal. It was like one of the best matches I've ever seen, performance wise, technical wise. It was by far like up there with you know some of the greats. And the Razor Ramon Shawn Michaels match, like I said, I was there. I was a WrestleMania. Team. I was like in a freaking eighth row, ninth row. My dad got me tickets for my birthday, and we were. My dad's like, he's like I'll never forget. My dad said, "They're really hitting each other for the ladder." No shit, Dad. What do you? You can't fake when the guys jump when Shawn Michaels jumped off the top with the ladder onto Razor Ramon. You can't fake that. I'm sorry, you're gonna get hurt. Um, so, otherwise, uh, <clears throat> that's my top ten. My my next topic I'm gonna do uh, coming up with Mr. X will be back hopefully soon. Um, I think he threw it at me. Uh, top ten, either I don't know if we want to go WrestleMania moments or WrestleMania matches. Um, there's just so many matches I couldn't even I, I couldn't narrow it down to ten. I'd have to do like a twenty because ten is just like too. There's been so many great WrestleMania matches in WrestleMania history. You know, we're up to 34 now. You know, and for me to go back and have to look at all 33, it's you know, it, it, it's tough. You know, I, I don't know how I would be able to do it. 20, I'd probably be able to narrow it down a little bit better because there's a lot of matches are thrown there. Um, you know, the Undertaker Shawn Michaels match, Hell in a Cell was ridiculous. Um, Rock Stone Cold WrestleMania, I do believe, it was 18 or 19. Uh, it was a great match. I think it was the ones with the Stone. I think it was 19. Stone Cold's last match. Uh, with the Rock. Um, that match was unbelievable. Hogan Andre. Uh, you know, th there's a, there's a list that I I could probably just right off the top of my head, but I have to really sit down, go through all the WrestleManias from one through thirty, you know, to thirty three, and really sit down. But um, I think I'm go WrestleMania ma moments or matches. Both, either way, the one of the greatest moments, I think, was when Daniel Bryant won at WrestleMania 30. That was, like, one of the greatest moments because I was a huge fan of Daniel Bryant. And for him to go through all of what he did to get, you know, get through Triple H and not to fight Randy Orton, Batista, of all people, in a triple threat match to win the belt, to win the WWE and, and heavyweight champion was, was pretty amazing. So that was one of my favorite moments as well. Um, uh, like I said, last year's moment, I, like I said, I don't know if he's coming back, The Undertaker. I thought last year when he lost to Roman Reigns, the way he ended it, Put his stuff in the ring, his hat, the coat, the whole kit and caboodle. And he went, lowered himself down through the arena. That was pretty. Like I said, I don't want to see him come back and fight John Cena. I really, really don't. Um, people are saying it's Rey Mysterio now, which I could care less. Rey Mysterio still in good shape. He's 43 years old, but he still can go. Undertaker's 53, and he, you know, at the last year, watching Roman Reigns. Granted, there's been pictures looming on the internet of him in the gym. Um, great, you can be in the gym, look great all you want, but unless you know how to, you know, can still move around in the ring and everything. And do you know? Like I said last year, he just looked a shell of himself, and I, I, I don't want to see him come back. I, I, if they do, it's, it's, I don't know. A lot, a lot of older fan, older school fans like myself, are definitely going to appreciate it. I'm going to do some emails because I got an interesting email from um, a celebrity, actually, because I'm a, I follow his, I follow him and his videos. I'm going to do his last, but I have one right now from Buddy Delph. My name, Buddy Delph. At mail.com. My name is Adam Guile from Saskatch 
basketball in Canada. I'm 14 and I'm a big WWE fanatic. I really like your program very much and want to ask you some questions for the show. Great. Awesome. Here we go. Let's get the movies over here real quick. Who is your all-time favorite wrestler and why is he your favorite? <sighs> See, it's a tie. Uh, I grew up in the mid, you know, you know, growing up in the 80s. That's when wrestling really caught my eye and the guy who caught me the most was Hogan. Um, of all time, it's probably a tie between Hogan and Stone Cold. They're my two favorites of all time. And right now, AJ is probably one of my favorites as well. But of all time, if I had to pick one, I'd probably say Hogan because he's the one that really got me into wrestling. Uh, you should do a live trivia questions. I'm really good and impress a lot of people with my trivia. Maybe I will do one down the road. I turned a few friends on from school to your show. Can you please give them a shout out? Laquan, Tasha, Landju, the all of WWE. Shout out to those guys. Hope you're watching. Another question. Question number four. Is Neville ever going to come back? I want to see him wrestle Rey Mysterio. Dude, I would love to see Neville come back. Um, they never should let him go, honestly. He, he was carrying the cruiserweight division. Once he left, it kind of, you know, like I said, it hasn't been the same since he left. So um, I would love to see Neville come back. I would love to see him wrestle Rey Mysterio as well. Um, <laughs> this is a funny one. Mr. X reminds me of Brock Lesnar. He shows up when he, when he wants. He should, change it. he should change his contract to be so he's always on. Well, there's no really contract. I mean, Mr. X do this voluntarily. You know, we're, none of, we're not getting paid for this, either one of us, especially me or him, for that matter. So, um, but Mr. X, you know, he, um, this is his, not his main job, obviously. He has another job and he travels a lot. So, um, so you know, he gets on when he can. You know, he was just away overseas, so the time difference has kind of screwed him up. And he's, I don't know, he's, I don't know if he's even getting in. Hopefully he's watching this. Um, but anyways, besides that, um, no, there's no contract. But I love Mr. X and I, I miss him having him right now. JMR says, I'm sure that Mr. X has a great career and makes more money than this silly Canadian's entire extended family, allowing Mr. X to live a lavish lifestyle. <laughs> Who knows? Anyways, uh, uh, I met Bret Hart at a Toyota dealership in Canada in 2014. It was so cool to meet one of my heroes. Who's your hero and, ha and who have you met? Um, my hero in wrestling was, my hero growing up was Don Mattingly, um, the Yankees, I'm a diehard Yankee fan. Um, wrestlers that I've met, um, I've met a few. I met Hogan when I was like eight years old, uh, for like three, like for like eight seconds. Uh, he slapped my hand and was signing autographs, and I was like caught in the middle, leaning up against the thing, and my dad was behind me and trying to push me in, and, but he slapped my hand, and that was like probably the greatest moment of my life meeting a wrestler. I met The Undertaker, uh, Mantar, I met, um, Shawn Michaels, um, one time, uh, who else? I met, who else I met? Mantar, I met, um, I met Marty Jannetty, I met McFoley, um, a couple other guys. That's pretty much it. Um, how do I call your show so I can talk to you and Mr. X decides to show up? Um, we're trying to figure out a way to do a live call-in show, but that's still in the works, so, um, give me, give me some time. I'll hopefully figure that out down the road. My stepdad loves Jake the Snake. He wanted me to ask... You, why he never he did a single thing with Hogan ever? Hogan and Jake Snake never got along, from what I was told. And um, Jake's um, bi autobiography he did on his um, on WWE Network. You should watch it; it's really good. And um, Hogan also said they didn't get along, um, and Hogan didn't want to deal with snakes. So <laughs> that was one of the thing, and they definitely didn't. They came up from like different. They came up with the business around the same time, but they were they the way the, the way they went about going into the business, the way Hogan did it, the way he did it. Um, you know, and Jake never had a championship, and I think that was, he could have been an NFL champion or even heavyweight champion if he had a run with Hogan, which I think would have been a great, but they, they never got along. So but, but he, Vince and Vince refused, uh, Vince, they, they both told Vince they refused to work with each other. I love the show a lot. It will be, will it ever be on a podcast one so I can download? I'm so glad it's free. If you ever come to Canada, please do a live show. Adam. Thanks, Adam. Um, like I said, that's still a lot of stuff in the works, man. Like I tell you, it's down the road. Um, Hopefully I can get something. This is the one celebrity who I'm a big fan of. Uh, not really working angle with Jake attacked him. Because Jake wouldn't get cheered for Vince next it. Yeah, uh, I remember that. But but in his I don't know if you watched some. His um, autobiography said he didn't get along with Hogan. They didn't get along. So um, that's one of the reasons why Vince also nixed it after that one segment you were talking about, Jake. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Um... <sighs> I got this because I'm a big follower of this guy, and I sent a message to him while watching one of his videos and put my email. Never think he would respond, but this is what I got. Yo, hey, this is Michael Rappaport. Someone, someone from your rampage commented on one of my thingamajigs about a month or so ago, and I got, a, I got to watch a few of your ramp videos. I really appreciate your style and your realness. I hate all these fake-ass people 
that think they have something to say but really don't. I also like that you do your own thing. The theme song you come out to, and when you disapprove of something, you make that fart-like noise with your mouth and hand. That shit had me cracking up. I like wrestling, but not, not like I did back in the days of Andre the Giant, King Kong Bundy, and Coco Beware. All the classic guys. I'm taking my nephew to a show in a few weeks, actually. The women are so hot, they stitch me up. What do you think of the best... What do you think was the best years in wrestling? I told you mine. Thanks for do, reaching out, bro. You have my support and wish your continued success. Michael Rappaport. That's awesome. P.S. This is the funny part. Please feel free to read the above email and say I'm a fan. But do not give me my email address. If you do, I'll be your sworn enemy. Maybe I can give you a plug on, my, on one of my quick videos I do sometime. That would be great, Mike. But thanks for the support and thanks for the email. Um, yeah, I, I, I grew up, like I said, you're a little bit older than me, but we're kind of in the same area of... Um, era of uh, wrestling with Andre and King Kong Bundy and Hogan and those guys. Um, but mine, I think, because I was young and I loved going back then with, with friends was the Attitude Era, man, because I love Stone Cold and, and The Rock and Degeneration X and Undertaker. You know, those guys, those were awesome guys. And that's, you know, now nowadays, now that the millennials being such pussies and, oh, you can't do sucking anymore to anybody. You couldn't give anyone the finger without, you know, without anyone freaking being so offended nowadays because everyone's so, oh, that's so offensive. Oh, boo-hoo. Yo, growing up in our attitude era, the attitude era growing up when I was 20, in my 20, late teens, early 20s, yo, pff, we weren't pussies like that. We didn't give a shit if someone did this to us because we knew what it meant. Or give us the finger because, or said, you know, that's the bottom line. Or do you smell? You know, I... Loved that era. The Attitude Era to me was the greatest. Granted, the gold, you know, the era, the era, 80s era is where I started watching, but the Attitude Era was probably the best era in professional wrestling and we'll never see it again because Vince has gone PG because of all these little millennial pussies. Oh, that's offensive. Oh, that's, you know, the Attitude Era was badass. You know, girls walking around bikinis half the time doing, you know, uh, mud wrestling matches. There was crazy storylines. Stone Cold was blowing shit up every week. The Rock talked trash and like cursed the people all the time, dude. You know, DX was always doing suck it and making had the best skits. Yo, I'm sorry, but the Attitude Era was by far the best era of wrestling so since I've been alive. Because the era now is not bad. You got like I said, if we could have signed AJ Styles when he first came up, yo, the matches that cat would have had with Shawn Michaels, Stone Cold, The Rock, you know, the list goes on. Would have been awesome. Him and Samoa Joe and Finn. If they came up like 10, 15 years ago, that would have been twice as good as it ever was. But you probably would have never known guys like Edge, Christian, you know, um, the Hardys. Like those guys would have probably been put on the back burner because, but tag team wrestling back then was awesome. You know, you had the great, those great, the Dudleys, you know, Edge and Christian and the Hardys and, you know, APA, the Nation of Domination, DX, like all those tag teams were awesome. Nowadays, you only got any. You know, they're all they're all garbage tag teams. But Michael Rappaport, man, when I saw this email, man, I almost freaking fell out of my chair because I had to double check if it was legit. And I looked looked at his page, his webpage, and it says legit. It's Michael Rappaport, and I was like, God damn, Mike! Shout out to you. If you can do a plug to plug my show, man, I'd really appreciate that. It would be super awesome. But thanks for following me. I hope you keep watching, man. Tell your friends. Tell everybody you know because that, like I said, no one. You're the only celebrity who's ever reached out to me before. So I was like. What? <laughs> so, thanks a lot, man. I love your stuff. Go, the Knicks. I, I, I know you're a big Knicks fan like myself. The Knicks are terrible. I don't know what to do about them. The Yankees are looking good this year, and the Giants got sick of picking the draft. So I'm hoping everything's looking good. Anyway, folks, that's all I got. Thanks for the emails. Mr. X will be back soon. Send us questions, comments, emails. My next topic is going to be greatest matches, greatest WrestleMania matches. Of uh, I'll probably do my top. 10 or 20, I'll, I'll discuss with Mr. X what we want to do, and I'll, I'll probably post it on my on my uh, page. But um, send emails, questions, comments, jerrygman2376 at yahoo.com or wrestletalk2018 at yahoo.com. Folks, till next time, I got to go. I'll see you when I see you. Hey, nobody paying to know to feel the pain. Hey, I, love, I love this song. <laughs>